Okay. Hey team, welcome back to another great episode of the Intentional Agribusiness Leader Podcast. This is your host, Mark Jewell, and I'm on today joined with Jim Ed from Netafim. Jim, thanks for being on here, man. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here today. Yeah, this is going to be a fun conversation. Uh, let's dive right in. What does it mean for you, Jim, to be intentional? You know, I think that it, it, being intentional is really about um, having a purpose. So um, wh wh whenever you start managing a project or, or managing a role or people is is to uh, to communicate what your intentions are and um, and be able to, you know, identify things that that they're interested in as, as well as, um, as well as not just the drive of the company, but to, to lead with a purpose. I love it. That's a great, we, we've, we've had that come up a couple of times lately, lately, people talking about, you know, intention being purpose, uh, being deliberate, right. Being in that kind of, uh, it's, it's something that we mean to do, right? Yes. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, it's not something that just happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's the part that's the most challenging about this. Since ever since I started studying intention, intentional leadership, this is, uh, this has become prevalent to me. The more I study it, the more ways I find, find out that maybe I'm not right. It shows me cause I'm, cause I'm now I'm measuring against a higher standard of what intention really looks like. It shows me how hard it is to pull it off, you know, how much time and for lack of a better word, how much intention is is really required you know right yeah yeah uh how, how does how do you apply intention into your day-to-day -day? so um I, I think a really good example is is uh, in my current role uh i have a lot of dotted lines between people but um yeah. but you know my hard line is is to my manager and, and um and so I need a lot more support from everybody that I have a dotted line underneath me in order to, to achieve my goals. Mm. And um, so an example is we utilize monday.com. Mm -hmm. And so I was just on a call yesterday and actually this morning as well with our regional st uh, strategy manager for the Americas. And, you know, we outlined all of our tasks for the year that we want to accomplish. And, and um, so I think it's, you know, keeping all those in mind every day when you get up and, and start the day. Yeah. Wonderful, man. What, what does it look like for you over the course of your career being involved with, I'm sure, some cultures that operated intentionally and maybe some that didn't operate so intentionally? How, you know, how did that impact you? How did it make you want to show up and go to work? I think being intentional has definitely um, in companies I've worked for with that culture, mm -hmm. it's uh, probably more positive for me just yeah. from a standpoint that um, you're much more focused versus um, uh, there, there was one company that I worked for in the crop insurance industry that I, I would say we weren't very intentional. We were very reactional uh, re reactionary based and, and, um, and probably weren't as focused and, and it was a much harder to achieve success in your role when, when you're not intentional about it. Yeah. Do you, do you think that just gets driven from the top down? I mean, if we have unintentional leaders at the top of the organization, does that just permeate throughout the whole business? I would definitely agree with that. Um, yeah. you know, our, my direct manager in that role where, where it wasn't very intentional, um, it was, was more intentional, but his boss was, was not necessarily. And, um, so it, uh, kind of led itself to a culture of, of what I would say, lack of planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and this is what happens by definition, our def, like the reason we, we, need to put focus on intentional leadership is when we have those moments in life, those phases or, or seasons in life, when we, when we're not being intentional about planning, just take planning as simple as it sounds like planning is not easy. It takes, it takes time. You have to allocate minutes of your day, hours of your day, weeks of your month <laughs> to actually 
go plan things, right? Whether individually or as a team. And I think a lot of people will skim over this because our days are so full of Zoom calls and phone calls and, and driving in your truck and, and meetings with customers, growers, et cetera. There's so much going on that people don't have a lot of time left over. So what they don't realize is it's like, if what, it's almost like you you have to you have to you have to run it like a 401k right you don't notice that it comes out of your paycheck right, right? yeah like you look at it on a pay stub you know whether you get a physical one or once a month or you get a a digital one you'll notice that it's on there but you don't notice it from your pay right, right? and to me being intentional has got to become like that right like we need to have times blocked into the month to sit down and say this is what we're doing my oh, wife yeah. and I have the last week of each quarter blocked. Nobody gets there. Kids don't get it. Customers don't get it. The business doesn't get it. Like that week is our week every 90 days to go focus on, okay, we got to run the, 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 the king and queen got to run the kingdom here. Mm -hmm. What do we, we, we take that intentional time away, whether here at home or we go somewhere, but there's, there's some intentional time that's going to happen there. We, now we don't even think about it. At first, it was hard to implement that, right? But now we don't even think about it. Yeah, as, you know, if, if you don't, then the next time you look up, it's two or three weeks later. And you go, wow, did, did I really get all done that I needed to get done during those two or three weeks? Or did I <laughs> just kind of buzz through it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cause, well, because it's, it's not like... So I, I used to do some Muay Thai fighting back in my thirties, right? I'll still do as a workout. I don't do any, I, I don't get generally don't get in fights anymore. <laughs> uh, but I, when you, when you get into the ring, like you can prepare, you can, you do, you do the best you can to get into shape. You practice, right? You practice your moves. You try to get as good as you can. But as soon as you step into that ring and the ref leaves the middle and it's just you and one other person, like the the plan is out the window within short order, right? Right. Because you got a plan and he's got a plan, <laughs> you know? And, and so at the end of the day, like it happens really quickly and, the, and life is the same way, right? Like we have a go-to-market plan. You're bringing a product to market right now. You've got a plan for that. Well, guess what? I mean, the market may throw a curveball right in front of you and you didn't see it coming. Yeah, I I stepped into this role almost a, a year ago exactly, and uh, and I thought it was going to be so much easier than it was, and yeah. and it's it's proven to be a lot more challenging than than what I initially ex expected that it would be, just yeah. because of of you know that entrance into the market and and you know what are all the objections that you're going to get um, that you know, you hadn't already accounted for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's always so many things that get thrown in the way, man. So I'm curious, you know, what's been your experience either with the current company or, or, or past companies uh, as it pertains to being able to attract and retain good people? You know, what, what, what works for you? What's made you want to stay? What's made you want to leave? Uh, and I think that's one of the most important things that's going on in our industry right now is, mm -hmm. is the ability to retain good people because um, there are, the, there gets to be so much outside noise of other things happening and going on that, that if you, if you let it consume you, you go, well, gosh, you know, it, this sucks. I, I don't want to be here. And then, then if you really get to thinking about it, you go, well, you know, everywhere has its problems, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, uh, I, I think, you know, w one of the things that, that I've looked at when, whenever, um, I, I had a change in role, uh, about four years ago within the company where, where I, I had a territory and, and I, I was, boy, I mean, I had it all lined up for, for, it was going to print money the next year. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, and then in, in around Thanksgiving, my boss calls me and he says, Hey, uh, we're going to change your territory up. <laughs> and, uh, and, and they give me this territory that's really, really difficult, uh, has some difficult customers and, and, and totally through, through my plan that I, I had already generated for the next year, 
in the oh, shambles man. and and I, I I almost left over it. Um, yeah. But then the culture that we have here at NetFM, as far as uh, I think we do a really good job of of building a family within our company. Mm-hmm. And and so you have your teammates and, uh, and and I mean, they're all close friends of mine besides the fact that I work with them. And right. so I, I think, you know, a culture of, quote, family, um, our benefits are outstanding here. I, I think that, you know, benefits become a very important part of that um, because if if you don't have good benefits, I, I don't think you have much of an anchor to really hold hold people there. You know, you, uh, it doesn't matter how much family it is. If there aren't good core benefits to working for a company, I, I think that's one of, for me, that's like the key thing that probably holds me here is, is the fact that, you know, we've got a great 401k that's unmatched in the industry. We've got, um, you know, wonderfully affordable uh, health insurance and, and, um, and, you know, those things are, and I think, especially in today's climate with all the, the economic issues that we're going through, those are really important to people. Sure. Yeah. Those things are really important to people just to have all the blocking and tackling in place that are really dependable as a small business owner. That's one of the biggest challenges often one of the make things that makes it really hard for me to bring in good people is that overhead that Im- immediately gets created around health insurance. And I mean, just as a small organization, we're never going to be able to compete even with a mid-sized organization. If we're, if we're just putting, you know, stacking up 401k and health benefits, which are really important things. It's just, a, it's a big challenge. We have to get really creative. <laughs> like, like my health insurance, if it was unsubsidized by the company is, you know, two thousand dollars a month yeah i mean that's that's a big thing yep i definitely know that because nobody subsidizes mine <laughs> and, and, and i and i pay about four hundred dollars a month <laughs> right right yeah it's, it's 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 quite extreme when you stack it up that way and uh, that's the nice thing about group group buying power right 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 yeah. what who's been somebody that you've admired over the course of your career jim I I don't know if you know this guy or not, but um, Pat McDonald. Uh, went, whenever I worked back in at, at Rome Planck, and then then later I worked for him actually directly when we became Aventus, and I moved into to RTP to the home office. Um, has been a very influential person in my life from a standpoint of of you know we've we've all been given goals that didn't seem attainable. And, and he always has had a way of mentoring where, you know, just, just eat that elephant one bite at a time, you know, Mm -hmm. and stay focused on the end goal. And then once, you know, as, as long as you stay focused on that end goal and are thinking about how it's going, how you're going to get there. Yeah. And that's kind of the key. And, and like that guy, can turn out more stuff in four hours than, you know, the average person can in probably 10. Mm. And, um, and so just, I've always wanted to strive to be able to, to be that person that can get my tasks done in shorter than the eight hour day, because there's always other tasks to, to do, you know? Yeah. Do you think for him, was it, was it just sheer focus that allowed him to churn out more. I'm often jealous of people. I think I look at people that can just crank it out, man, you know, and, and I, I struggle to focus that much in that short of, short of a time frame. So does, do you think that's what it was or just a, a higher standard for achievement for him or what? I, I think it's focus. I, I really do think it's focus. Um, I mean, he would go into his office and, and there'd be times that he, you know, he had a very open door policy, but there would be certain times where he blocked and he worked, I mean, he churned during those, you know, couple hours during the day and nobody bothered him. Yeah. And, um, and I think that focus is, is probably the key. You know, there are times now when we really just need to go leave the phone in another room, right? Sit down, you know, at your computer, if that's where you're doing work right now and, and, 
and, and just crank it out. And then sometimes you almost got to just disconnect from the internet so you don't get the notifications, right? They turn off right. the Wi-Fi altogether. Yeah. Just sit down sure. and hammer it out. If you, if it's something that doesn't require you to be on the web or something, right. It's um, I was just thinking about this earlier. I was being very productive. I mean, for a couple hours, really, I cranked out a lot of stuff <laughs> here just a couple hours ago and we're, we're launching a new app. So I was working with the developer on the app and I'm working with, uh, getting getting the uh, podcast playlists and different things put together. We've got customers that we're enrolling into our coaching programs. We've got a lot of things going on, handling it all, feeling like I'm doing a good job of quarterbacking all of it. But then I also realized, like, I mean, there's three other things that just didn't get done because I'm bouncing from one, from my phone to the computer, to this thing, to that thing, you know, and I'm like, man, am I, am I actually losing efficiency well, and, and I think one of the things that is a real challenge right now is that more and more tools are online based. And and so it becomes harder and harder to disconnect and take that time because you have to have a connection to the Internet to do the tools that you're, you know, to address the, the tasks that you're working on. Yeah. And um, and so I like I really like locally based tools on my machine versus yeah, versus, yeah. versus stuff that's online. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what, what's what been one of your biggest hurdles that you've had to overcome, Jim? I think probably my biggest hurdle is, is that I, I have tendencies towards workaholic where I just, you know, mm. dedicate myself to my, to my work. And, um, and so it's hard to have, it's very hard for me to have a good work-life balance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That can be a big challenge. What have you what What have you had to do to overcome that? You, you just have to make yourself and, and it's very hard. Um, I it's something I struggle with every day. You know, um, yeah. you come home from a trip and you duck in your office that you're just going to do a couple things. And the next thing you do, you look up and it's three to four hours later. And mm -hmm. so, so sometimes when I come home, I just, I don't go by my home office. I, I just walk right on in and, and go in the house and, and, um, and, and don't do that because otherwise I know that I'll be there three to four hours. We have to create boundaries around some of those things, don't we? We do for sure. And, and it's hard uh, because, you know, there's all these things in your head going 90 miles an hour that, you know, that you have to get done and it's really hard to, to shut that off. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we, that we coach on and then Christine, my wife and I talk about this with our clients a lot as well. And this is something that we implemented as a practice because we're both home-based. So unless we're out producing an event somewhere, which is about a quarter of the time, but that's 75% of the time we're working out of the home office. It's very easy. My office is right off the living room in the kitchen you know, and, and, and it's in an open area. So it's very easy just to come sit down. You know, it's, I, I tell her she gets lost in, in the vortex. She'll disappear up there. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I'm like, Hey, I thought we were going to go have coffee. And it's like four hours later, you know, or, or we're going to go work out. And four hours later, I don't, you know, I haven't even heard from her. So, but we implemented something at the end of the day, if we're both here at the house, no distraction, we get outside, we go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Even if we just, it's like a mile, like 0.9 miles up to, uh, the little clubhouse in our neighborhood. We live near a golf course. We just walk up there and we walk back. Sometimes we take the dogs. Sometimes we don't. If we have more time, we do the loop, which is like a 5K loop. It's about three miles. And we'll do that before we go into the kitchen to start making the supper. Because the other thing, and I don't know if you guys struggle with this, but the other thing that's really easy when we're just home is to just roll into the kitchen. We've got a great kitchen for entertaining and preparing food. Crack open a bottle of wine, right? Maybe sit on the patio if it's warm out, if it's summer. And, and that's fun too, but it's really easy for that to become the every night experience. And now you start depending on, you know, like the wine experience to kind right. of wind down, <laughs> to right. wind down, which I find impacts my productivity tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but having some sort of a ritual, right. At the end of the day or in between things to be able to stop, maybe connect with your loved ones, whatever the case may be, I think is really important. Yeah, I do too. It's, but it is definitely hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, so just curious, what, what are you working on right now? That's, that's exciting that people should know about. 
So uh, in this new role that I took a year ago, I'm, I'm launching a new product where we're separating solids out of manure in um, beef, dairy, and swine CAFO operations. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it's, it's really groundbreaking technology. It's a new way to apply manure. Um, there's like so many environmental benefits to it. And so it's, uh, it's something that, that I have a lot of passion around. I actually have, have worked for about five and a half years to, to kind of create the position that I'm in and, and then was asked to, to fill this role. So, um, it's, it's a really exciting role that I'm in. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, do you have, I know you, you mentioned a lot of dotted line folks. Do you have a team that you're working with as well that, that, you know, directly reports to you or anything like that? So I don't have any, um, direct hardline reports, mm -hmm. but I have, uh, our team of dealer relationship managers and then also, um, agronomic relationship managers that I work with day in, day out in, in order to, uh, to better prepare them to, to sell the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and that's almost harder, right? Because you don't have direct supervision. It almost takes it, more intention. Right, it does. To get results. Yeah. It, it it does because you know they they have all of their own goals that that are actually you know more of an overarching goal, and so you know they're focused on just hitting a number at the end of the day, and 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 I'm interested in hitting my number, right. and uh, and so um, so I guess part of the difficulty becomes. Uh, how to build the passion with them that they want to hit, you know, they, they want to sell SDIE as part of hitting their overarching goal. Mm, right. Cause I assume they have other things. Correct. That they're rep right. So they may have a favorite product or incentives towards another product line that. Right. So now so, you got to get attention toward your thing as well. It, yes. Cause we have an alfalfa initiative also that is separate from my initiative. And, and, uh, and so that they have goals associated with that as well. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then their overarching territory goal. So I imagine we could have a whole other conversation about this. Maybe we will someday, but what, what how do you go about capturing the, the attention there's two levels of attention that you need one is your own internal team and getting attention and buy-in towards the thing that you're trying to produce and sell then the second one is the customer level right and then that's their job is to go fight for that attention to get the adoption of the product at the customer level too right how, how do you how do you tackle that internally to try to get mind share so i think one of the most effective ways that that i do it personally is is that um I involve involve them by making joint calls with them. Mm -hmm. So to so if you can go and make joint calls with them, and then they sell a couple of the systems, then they become much more, um, you know, much more acquainted with the product as well as the process that it takes yep. to sell it because it's it's a it's a really different kind of sell, and. Um, and so once they become more comfortable with that, then it's it's a lot easier to get them to um, to just almost seem like it's second nature to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think the, so. So taking a hands on approach, actually getting out there on site with them is yeah, very Correct. intentional. Like I like it. I like it. Cool, man. Well, this this has been a, a really fun and fast conversation. Somehow we've had a half an hour go by here today but oh really <laughs> any, any last thought yeah uh just uh, just about but any last thoughts uh that you would uh, that you'd want to share with folks uh before we bring it in for a, a landing i think just that um you know when, when you contacted me about about doing this podcast that that mm -hmm. i i kind of questioned you know well am I that intentional and stuff? And, and then, you know, you get to thinking about the things that you do. And, and, um, and, and I think a lot of times we probably gloss over um, the fact that we are, you know, intentional on some things, but um, you know, as you mentioned, you know, you want to kind of get to that place where, where it's just second nature. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, in some places I'm there, but then in other places I'm not. And, and mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and I guess my goal is just to keep, 
keep working there to get there in in every area I want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's such a great insight. I'm going I'm to spend a minute right on that. Just a really good insight there because most of us are walking around throughout the course of the day, 60 to 65,000 thoughts running through our brain every day. And the vast majority of them, not positive. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We were trained from a very young age to beat ourselves up, be self-critical. We're always, we're, we're not always, but often we are focused on the things that we're not doing well, the ways that we're not executing. I'm not sitting here right now, you know, jumping off when we jump off this call, I'm not going to go to work on the things that I've already done. I'm not thinking about the stuff that, that the 13 things I crossed off my list today. I'm thinking right. about the three I did. Right. Right. And, I'm th- and then I'm thinking about the fact, ah, shoot, I don't have time to do it because now I got to jump in the truck and go pick up my kids from school. And then once they get home from school, it's going to be disruptive. And, and then how am I going to get anything else done? Right. My mind, like most of most everybody else goes to that. Right. And so we judge ourselves critically and we don't think of ourselves as intentional. And what I would encourage you and everybody else to do is to take a moment and do an inventory of the places that you actually are. And if you can't come up with one, find somebody in your life that can and actually show you where you are. We are more often than we're not because we're often all well intended. Mm -hmm. Even when we do things wrong or we do things poorly, we generally aren't doing things poorly from a malicious standpoint, right? We're not trying to hurt anybody. We're not trying to be bad. We're doing, we just, but we screw up because we're human. Well, and I have a perfect example from yesterday. So yesterday I had a a really good day that I got a lot of stuff crossed off my list, but we're, we're working on kicking off some research projects with some universities and we're, we've been struggling on getting them paid and everything. And, and, Mm -hmm. and I mean, how I ended my day yesterday is I called my manager and I'm like, you know, Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't get get that vendor master data form fill, you know, completed. And, and now we're going to have to go through these other steps. And, and my manager was like, Hey, don't worry, man. I, I got you. You know, you've got all these other things that you got done. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and it kind of talked me off the ledge a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've got to focus on some areas where we are doing, doing it well. And and we're going to be most motivated to be intentional for others. Cause we're all, most of us are so servant minded. We we're here to serve others. You also got to be intentional for yourself. Yes. You know, so good, man. This has been a fun conversation. Thanks for letting me spend a little extra time on that. You bet. It's good, man. Thanks for being on here. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it, Mark. Good to talk to you.